Welcome to Our City. I'm your host, Oscar Jarda, and here's what's going on this week in Our City. Friday, March 28, 2008, at 10 a.m., Mayor Bowage will attend the Community Development Block Grant's annual celebration of National Community Week in the Elizabeth Main Branch Library. This year's theme is CDBG On the Right Road. CDBG is a federal funded program that assists the cities with improving the quality of life for residents. Later in the evening, Mayor Bowage will join members of the Union County Commissions on the status of women in their 16th annual dinner in Garwood. The event will honor women who have made significant contributions in their chosen occupations and or in their communities. On Sunday, March 30th, 2 p.m., Mayor Bowage will join Kane University President Darwood Farahai in the 2008 Kane University Foundation Scholars Recognition Ceremony. The event will have photo ops and a scholarship awards programs in Downs Hall. For more information, call 877-737-3868. Once again, the number is 877-737-3868. If you need more information concerning these or any other events this week, please call the Public Information Dex at 908-820-4124. Once again, the number is 908-820-4124. Once again, I'm your host, Oscar Jarda. Welcome to Youth View. And I'm your co-host, Imani Lewis. Today, we're going to be discussing peer pressure. Now, for those who haven't noticed, premarital sex, drug use, and peer pressure have become a growing epidemic in our community. Today, we have a young panel here to discuss the situations they are faced with every day. Now, let's introduce the cast and have them say a little something about themselves. Hello, my name is Ashanti Mars, and I attend Elizabeth High School, Jefferson House. Hello, my name is Clinton Miller. I'm the student assistance counselor at Elizabeth High School Halsey House, where I work with students. Mr. Miller. Yes. What effect do you think television has on drug use and abstinence? Um, unfortunately, I believe that it has a very powerful negative effect because what teens see on television is what they act, eventually do, um, and there's no set standard for abstinence or not, no, there's no standard against premarital sex. Everybody's doing it. Students at home, it's in the movies, it's on any HBO, uh, it's just all over the place. So it's, there's no curb or restraint on television. So I believe the students or young people are affected by that. And I believe that TV also paint a pretty picture of such things that what Mr. Miller said. Like they don't show the downside of the consequences of doing things like that. They just show that, oh, it happens, it's fun, and everything's going to be all good and dandy. Okay. Now, Ashanti, why do you think teens today feel as though they need to engage themselves in sex? Well, I think it has to do with stereotype and also media. Media will portray things that are just good and, you know, that there's no consequences. And also, they just think that because they're young and teenagers that they're invincible, that you could just do something and it won't affect you tomorrow or later in your life. Little do they know that there's a lot of diseases and they're very deadly. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Miller. Do you think that peer pressure is a result of the growing number of pregnant youth in our community? Uh, to a certain degree, but I believe more so that there's uh, less parental involvement. Uh, parents are not at home. Mm -hmm. uh, students have a lot of time when they're alone. Um, and they start at a very young age because in the situation at home might not be where there's rules and regulation. There's a lot of freedom. So you have time for girl and guy get together, and teens are teens. So since they're free and there's no restrictions, they tend to do that. Now, okay. So Ashanti, what effect do you think peer pressure has on sex? Well, I believe peer pressure does play a major role in sex. Mm -hmm. um, it's I think it's it's been passed down through generations actually, since I don't know when, but people would think that oh because you're a teenager and you're young, you know, okay, then we're supposed to do this. This is what teenagers do, and this is what they have been doing since the beginning of time. You know, you're young, you can have as many partners as you want, and, you know, and everything's going to be okay, which is not true. And I also think, too, that the value system has changed, where there used to be a greater value system in the home, Absolutely. where someone would say to you, this is the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do. Uh, I believe that they almost don't exist. You almost have, almost have to get values outside the home, uh, young people who have someone they can look up to, 
they will tend to follow their values. If you don't have any direction, then you're going to do what you think is right. And many teams don't have an idea. They think it's okay uh, not thinking of consequences, but I think it has to do with the value system, our values, and I believe, or lack of values. Mm -hmm. And I believe too many parents are handing their children condoms rather than just sitting right. down talking to them mm -hmm. about, you know, the situation, what it is, and the responsibility that you carry with that. They're not telling them that, oh, I would rather for you to wait to, until you're married. They're just saying, like, oh, just be safe. Right. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. life is not like that. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Miller, drug use has become a very, very, very crucial topic in our community. Now, what role do you think peer pressure plays in that? Um, again, it's, it's a very sad situation. It goes again about back to, I believe, about values. Because if you're not taught, first of all, who you are and how you feel about yourself or you a bunch of your friends, then uh, you don't want to be called a punk. You don't want to be called, you know whatever teams call them, themselves these days. So you'll do it, even though you might not want to do it, even though you feel something your parents, in a case where you might be taught, don't get involved in drugs because if you, oh, some kids say, well, I'm just, I'm just smoking and I can quit when I get ready, whether it's uh, marijuana or it's tobacco. And uh, if you're not strong enough a person of who you, knowing who you are and, have, and be rooted and grounded and feel good about yourself, then you're, you're more likely to Follow what your friends say, as opposed to saying, you know, no, man, I don't want that. I don't want to get involved. And I think following your peers has to do with your self-esteem too. I believe you know, so. if a child doesn't have a strong personality or doesn't really believe or not too confident with themselves, and have you know, they're gonna fall into that because they, you know, they don't feel that confidence within themselves. They feel like they have to do everything their friends do right. because they don't feel like they can do things on their own right. without looking a certain way. Right. Okay. So, Mr. Miller, do you think that peer pressure is the reason why teens use or sell drugs? Um, I believe, I believe strongly that's the reason. I think selling of the drugs also has to do with the economy. I believe many teens um, would, write, would have a job. Guys, I want to have a job to have my own money. Uh, and unfortunately, they're blinded by its quick, fast money. Uh, they don't think about the legal consequences. And if they are caught, they are just the the, the the low guy on the totem pole, they, they might get caught and go to the county, have to serve time, whereas a person who's a supplier up the line, they're getting off scot-free. The other thing, too, is the, um, the, the, the use for money. So our system is that there's a, the unemployment rate among teens, especially African-American, Latino teens, is very high. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the more teens out there that want jobs. I believe that for that to turn around, more businesses should open up their doors, even if they have to have a training program mm -hmm. to hire teens. I also believe that teens need to try to seek out people to show them, how do I go for an interview? What do I do? How do I dress? Because I speak to them all the time. You can't, you don't go to an interview with your best friend. True. You know, you go for an interview seriously for yourself. You have to dress a certain way. So there are certain things that teens don't know, even how to go interview for a job. And I believe they need to seek out people who they have a relationship with an adult to say, well, I want to get a job. What should I do? How should I dress? What do I need to know? And I think it's very important. So those persons who are knowledgeable should make themselves available. 